Hey everybody, this is Friday, November 11th, 2022. It's 1111, so it must be your lucky day. It must be my lucky day. I wanna give you a Friday update. Let's quickly go through some important-ish news. USCIS has put out new forms. The most important of these are probably the new asylum form. Our office doesn't do asylum, but if you are filing for asylum, you should know. There's a new asylum form, make sure you check it out. Of more importance in terms of the forms to most people is the fact that there's a new medical examination form, N648. This form has been much simplified from its predecessor. It has become much clearer towards the medical professionals who are filling it out in terms of what needs to be done. So if you are in need of filling this out, make sure that you're printing off the right one. For those of you who are in the H2B program, we are still waiting for the official kind of uh, finalization of the release of additional visas for both the October cycle. And then we are waiting on what's going to happen and how things are gonna happen for the additional visa release for the April cycle. The bigger news or the biggest news maybe that um, seems sort of obvious for the immigration programs generally is that we just had a midterm election. The election, uh, you know, is significant in ways that uh, are bureaucratic, right, in nature, that are technical in nature. So the first thing to, to think about is, and we don't know for sure yet, but is the fact that the House might be Republican controlled. When that happens, there is a shift into, you know, what party controls certain committees, right, that are responsible for spending and making decisions on discrete parts of the U.S. budget and, you know, um, that are tasked also with helping regulate specific agencies. And for the purposes of immigration and H2B in particular, if the current count holds and the Republicans take the House, that means that the committees that deal with DHS are gonna switch into Republican hands, which for the H2B program is good. For family immigration, maybe it will lead to some increased complications for applicants. I don't know what those might be, but usually when, when we have kind of Republican control over the DHS committees, um, it's good for worker programs, uh, you know, visas it's a little less good or unclear if there's any effect on the family immigration part of things and i'm not going to talk about the humanitarian visa part right now so that's that's the biggest news now if the senate which we don't know what's going to happen until the georgia runoff in december if the senate were also to switch meaning fall into republican control then we know that uh, some champions of the h2b program in particular are happen to be republicans susan collins foremost among them that would probably be good news for the H-2B visa program. It would probably guarantee gridlock in all other parts of government, including the rest of immigration, on the other hand, because you'd have a Democratic executive versus a fully controlled Republican legislature. And we all know, if we follow U.S. politics, what gridlock means and what kind of problems we can have, whether it's budget battles or just the inability to get anything done um, through Congress is kind of assured at that point. So that's the big news that we're kind of paying attention to. The lack of news is striking and continues to be striking for DACA applicants who are still in limbo. Uh, the um, DACA program for right now, there are no new applications being allowed. The DACA program has resumed for those who have previously had DACA and they can continue to apply for renewals. But as of right now, the DACA program, I mean, is it is it time to say that it's almost dead? You know, is it time to say that the, the, the time is running out? Because with a uh, Republican controlled Supreme Court and even with uh, a, a legislative branch that it seems to be at least is going to have Republican control over um, you know, Congress, if not maybe even Senate after December, DACA doesn't seem like it has much of a, a legislative future, right? Or a future through the legislative process. And it doesn't seem like it has much of a chance at the Supreme Court stage. So the one of the questions that's running through my mind on this 11-11 is, is DACA done? And although we continue to monitor it, we we plan to do this whole DACA campaign back in 2021, like file 100 DACA applications, filing them online um, and showing you how they were filled out. Well, that all went to naught, and I and I fear that we are probably, if I had to call it right now, I think DACA's done. And at least it's done for the considerable future, at least for the next two years. So that's that's what this kind of means. The other thing that's on my mind today is that, uh, you know, I just, I had a meeting right before I was doing this uh, video with client, clients I love, and um, they're in this typical position where 
uh, you know, 485 has been filed for, uh, you know, a spouse. So the foreign spouse is in, in the United States. They're filing their 130, 485 package. And there's a period of time in this case where the spouse is not going to be able to work and not going to be able to leave the country, right? So they didn't have, they weren't on a visa previously that gave them uh, work uh, permission. They came here on, uh, you know, on a tourist visa and uh you know they decided to get married after being some you know uh you know some amount of time here kind of typical fact pattern but th that means that the spouse can't work and this particular spouse is feeling down which is so typical it's so typical of people who are waiting in the immigration process to lose a part of your identity right because when you can't work and you're used to working suddenly you've lost your work identity when you can't work on top of that it, it means that you're not earning your own money and you might lose right a good deal of your previously earned hard-earned independence and that can be stressful and so the question becomes what do you do like how do you productively get through this period and what i always tell people is you should be more ocd about your own health and about your own time management during the period where you can't work because you're either waiting on a work permit to come in or you're just waiting on your application to be processed. Because if you if you are lax about that, if you don't uh, give yourself the ability to master your own schedule, well, you're going to kind of put yourself in a spot that um, is going to lead to some some mental health um, outcomes that are not ideal specifically if you already feel like you're losing some independence and you already feel like you've lost some of your identity because you're no longer working then if you spend your days doing nothing all you're going to end up doing is going further and further into these places in your head where you're thinking about the past right about the things you lost and not thinking about the future and that's almost uh, kind of a, a textbook definition of depression, right? One of the definitions of what depression is, is that it's actually a uh, condition where your clock in your head, right? So we have this kind of clock keeping uh, part of our brain. Uh, think of some people call it the air traffic controller, right? Where it's like March, where it keeps time for us. And it keeps time for us in, in ways that, not, not by actually having a clock, but by like, uh, it says, okay, you go to work at eight, you come back at five, you watch TV at nine, you know, maybe you put the kids to bed at seven, you eat lunch at noon, right? These daily routines are what measure time in our head, right? That same part of the brain can get stuck in a loop where it says, okay, we're gonna think about the past now. And instead of getting out of the past, it stays in the past in this backwards loop. It just keeps on looking backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards. And slowly it loses the, the ability, right? Or it loses practice in marking time in the present and in looking forward towards the future. And so as soon as you get stuck in that loop where you're looking backwards, well, then you kind of, and you can't mark your presence in the today and you can't even look forward to a, a different version of you in the future well that's depression right and so the reason i tell folks who are in this sort of uh liminal space right a space that isn't one thing but it isn't yet another right this waiting space is to be ocd develop a set of goals you know for yourself you know for six months out for a year out for 18 months out right which if some some people might be waiting for 18 months for their 485 to get processed which is why i say 18 months but also be very strict with yourself in terms of organizing your day uh you know every time you wake up right have a plan for what you're going to do because the worst thing you can do is not have a plan again because you'll fall into that loop and then view this time where you're waiting right for your application not as lost time not as just waiting time but view it as an opportunity to learn something to get ready for this new future life not only will that keep you focused on the fact that there's a future but if you combine that with a steady daily plan you combine that with six month 12 month 18 month goals you will stay grounded in the present and out of you know your own head which is inclined during these times to look towards the past and again it can put you in this trap where you start feeling depressed or feeling sad all of these things it is hard and it's actually much harder than the actual process of filing the application and getting ready for the interview or, or what have you you know that is the challenge and i'd say much of my own personal development in this practice as an immigration lawyer was was coming to realize that that's the actual challenge for our clients it's it's not getting you the documents for the forms which which again can be challenging for somebody it's it's the wait you know the wait time is the hardest part so i hope this was helpful that 
that's my kind of tip for here for 11-11-2022. My name is Damien Noble. This is Law Great, and uh, I'll talk to you next Friday.